Hey, welcome back to the channel. It's me, your boy Jess, on the MK1 VR6 swap. I went ahead and replaced, give you a quick update, replaced the vacuum that I had that was red. Replaced it to black, which is hooked up to my vents up front. I'm still waiting on parts for my AC. So I'm still waiting on this line to come in. So I could go ahead and put that in, put my dryer bottle in, get all this stuff hooked up. Then I could go ahead and just, you know, do the oil, do the Freon, whatever, make sure I got no leaks. Once I get that accomplished and I know that's in there, then I could start working on getting the wire connected to the compressor, the two other wires here, and then getting a controller for the fans. So, because when the AC goes on, the fans got to turn on at a certain speed. So I'm just kind of figuring out if I'm going to be having one fan going control through the thermostat and then the other fan on the controller. This way it controls the condenser, which I might control this one here. Um, because the condenser, this is sitting on the middle of the condenser right here. So the condenser is here, and then it ends somewhere here, and then this one's still over the radiator. So this one will probably be full blast, and I'll probably be controlling this fan when I get started doing the AC. I also went ahead and replaced the catch can. So that's black. Everything's black. I'm going to work on this this weekend to eliminate this stuff from here so I can have a direct line and then push this valve down. And then I'm going to cut because I scraped the top of this. You can see how bad it's scraping is eating into it, but I got to cut this piece right here off. So, um, quick update. Um, I got this bracket here and this bracket is for a fuel pump. This holds your fuel pump, but I'm gonna give you guys a quick update on what I found. Cause I kept blowing fuel pumps before, and then I put an AEM one in here that I probably should have never had any problems with, but I end up having to take it out cause it, sitting right there it went bad and i believe i think i found the issue and it was because the fuel tank when the fuel tank was installed um not by me but by someone else when the fuel tank was installed there's this there's this vent that goes from the from the fill tube and it goes across the top and that's it right here on top and it goes down on top of the gas tank well there's a clamp that needs to go on top of there, and that clamp was never installed. So when I would go and get gas, if I if it overfilled, it went through the little overfill vents, and then it would just spill all out. So the gas tank wasn't making any pressure. So since the gas tank wasn't making any pressure, um, it wasn't letting gravity feed correctly. Another issue I was having was that the actual, this is called a check valve. Um, uh, gravity valve check valve that sits on top up here. This was clogged and this didn't work. So from the top of the gas tank, it comes up here, then it goes out to a vacuum on the bottom to help it circulate to a char uh, charcoal box that goes on the right side fender. Well, that charcoal box wasn't there when I got the car. So what I did is I went on Summit Racing, I eliminated that charcoal canister thing and I got a check valve right here. So then the tank, and then what I did is this went to the top and then this sat up here somewhere behind the car. So what I did is I went on Summit Racing and I bought my own check valve and I shortened the line and I stood it up right here. The vent, I got it facing that way and I put a bunch of zip ties on here. So that should help the gas tank vent out um, some sort of pressure. Um, and then also, you know, if you flip over, it's not going to spill all the gas everywhere. But I actually put a clamp on the top of that tank, which was dangerous because of that if you're moving around and gas is just flying out of there it could catch on fire one way or the other either by spark or heat or whatever you just never know but that fixed that problem um usually i told i said i had a problem when you put gas in it, it just keeps clicking click 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 because it because it can't the gas can't flow in there correctly and a lot of it has to be with the gravity feed that part i just showed you there that doesn't work so i just installed a new one i clamped that in to the gas tank, I put a clamp on it because um, that was forgotten by the other person who put it in. I got a brand new gas tank on here and I had someone helping me uh, do some work. And I guess he must have forgot to put that up there. So thank God I went through all. I checked every single thing and checked that. I also what I did um, this prior weekend is that I replaced the, the fuel filter, which I have here. So that's a 100 micron uh, fuel filter. And I put another fuel pump in, but that fuel pump is just too noisy. So I went ahead and went on Wilbro themselves and I ordered a fuel pump from them. But in reality, this is a gravity feed. Okay, so this gravity feed tank that goes, has a little nipple and it goes to the fuel pump. So no filter in between that, which 
you know it's hard because pretty much you got to go from the fuel tank into 100 microns to the fuel pump to a 10 micron fuel filter and then back to the to the engine but in this case i don't have the space for it so um if i move things around then you know the tank has to feed enough gravity fuel to the to the fuel pump or else you'll starve it and kill it so i so i gotta figure out something here um still the same video i was gonna end it but i just figured i save it so i'm back at my shop and i received the fuel pump from wilbur themselves this is straight from them this is it right here and if you could see there's another part i must have left it in the car there's a smaller thinner fuel pump but i assume this is my old bracket um i'm gonna go ahead and put it in here and get this sucker installed so it comes with some barb fittings so i'm just gonna do barb fittings on the pump i'm gonna remove the old pump that i just have hanging there i'm gonna go barb then i'm gonna change this and fitting that runs up to the fuel filter and i'm gonna change that back fitting and put a barb in there so i could change the line um for the fuel going in and i'm gonna leave the other one for the return alone so i'm gonna work on that another piece that i got that's in this box i haven't pulled this out yet but is this fuel this uh ac line here so you can see this ac line this um, um this uh cone right here that goes into the wall so what this one does this is the one i needed and this is the first time i look at it so i'm gonna have to put you know a washer on that clean that in and get slip the sucker in there so i can replace the one that i cut here so i could put my dryer bottle in in here so i'm gonna probably try to do that today I'm going to be removing these two parts out of here, this piece completely out and taking this fitting and moving it down. I got a huge gash there, so I got to cut a piece of my of my uh, rail here for the for the hood so it doesn't scratch on there anymore. But what I want to work on first is getting the fuel done. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the fuse. I'm going to purge the fuel real quick so I could drain any pressure that's in here. So I could go ahead and start eliminating this out of the way, get this out of the way. Then I could go ahead and install that. So I'm going to start on that real quick and I'll be right back. Put this sleeve it came with. So it has its own little sleeve. And then this is from the 044. Um, so it creates the exact same size. But what's funny about this fuel pump is that the flow is this way. And if you guys notice on other fuel pumps, the it accepts fuel here. And then it goes in that way. So this one's reverse. Because if you can see on my temporary fuel pump here, my leads are over here. Oh, no, it's right because the gas comes in this way. And then and then the fuel goes out that way. So this is right. So we want it to feed here and flow that way. Oh, shit. I think I might have fucked up. I'm going to have to pull it out again and see because I confused myself. So gas goes in through here and then flows out that way on this pump and i believe this one um gas goes in through here and flows out of that way so i'm gonna have to figure something out here and redo all this all right so it's hard to like film because i'm alone so i moved this down so i could clear the cover and i had to reuse this because i needed the coupler in order for this elbow to make it over this so i got that clear i took the wrap off of this I cut this piece off here because that's what was hitting here. But I haven't tested it yet to see if any more of it's going to hit. I don't know if I'm going to have to clean. Sorry. I don't know if I'm going to have to clean more of this off and maybe clean more of this off. I'm not sure. But I'm going to test that in a little bit. This way I can put the engine cover on. But let me talk to you guys about the um, about this fuel pump. So I went on Wobro Direct. I didn't go to Amazon, eBay. You want to go on Wobro Direct? This is the 255 fuel pump and then let me go ahead and show this to you zoom back a little bit but that clamp right there i got that from summit racing and i'm gonna tell you what man that fuel pump is quiet and as you can see there's a gravity fed tank and i don't have a filter which is required to have here but i don't have a filter here you should have at least a 40 micron here and then out to I mean, 100 micron there and then out to the fuel pump and out to a 40 micron. But what I did here is I just, you know, you want gravity here. I couldn't put the case that goes here because 
you have to want to angle this and then what i did is this is my ground wire even though it's red it's ground and i made my own little bracket and this thing is solid this is solid right here and it's quiet and then i did a return line and if you can see well this, this is the what feeds the engine and then that goes up and there you can see how i have it turned i have it turned under the tank there you can see the coming out of the fuel pump and then turning up and then what it does so it goes into the tank it returns then what it does it comes it comes up right up through here right back here and then i can show it to you there you see it right there comes up and then into the fuel filter there's a 100 micron fuel filter in here and i took my fuel line off the braided one and i put a put the fuel clamp on because this is bar fitting bar fitting to the and fitting to my metal fuel line which then you know that's the fuel filter then returns comes in this is the coming in right here comes in which i could see my pressure my fuel pressure on the engine on the cluster inside then goes to my fuel pressure regulator which i have set and i mean this thing is quiet so i'm gonna go ahead and start it for you real quick i still got the car on um and you can see here i'm gonna go ahead and start it oh check out these floor mats i got these on on ebay from turkey bro it took about a week to get them super fast anyway so you can see here starts right up and you can see 45 47 barbs running and i'll give it gas this is with the catalytic converter so So that's running. Okay. This is closed. And you can see that I got no fuel leaks. I haven't done the AC yet because I've been dicking with this the whole time. No fuel leaks whatsoever. And you can hear the pump. It quiet. You barely hear it. Like you gotta listen for it. So fuel's coming in, going out, going in through there. Coming in right here, feeding that pump, no kinks, no, no leaks. So now I should be ready to go out for a drive. Now let me also show you, that's what's the vent that I got from Summit Racing. So you got from the tank up to this vent, then this like black line right here that's cut, that goes out like a vacuum line to the charcoal box on your fender. I don't have it, so that's my new vent. That's how I'm venting that out. And then I reattached uh, this hose. That hose right here goes on top of the tank, which is this one. And that one was completely, didn't even have a clamp. So when I had someone put the gas tank in, they didn't put the clamp on top. So I found that. So hopefully this vent, that clamp, um, I should be able to have fuel. And then hopefully that's what builds pressure in the tank so I don't keep blowing out these fuel pumps. But that's all I could do, and that's the fuel filter I'm using right now. Maybe I'll go with something smaller later, but right now that's what I'm running. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the wheel on and go take this thing for a ride and see how it does. And then in a couple of days, I'll work on putting the AC line, putting the dryer bottle in, and getting this in there, and uh, and then working on hooking up the wiring and then figuring things out. I was thinking I have two fans here, is to make this fan my AC fan. And then this one for the coolant. So when the gets hot, this one turns on, but then this one turns on with the AC, you know, cause I have the AC on all the time. And then this one's on full speed when the car's getting hot, but this one should help keep the radiator cool and the AC because it's centered. I think I explained that earlier in the video. So that's kind of where I'm at. That's what I've been dicking with. It's been, you know, a trial and error to try to figure out all these fuel pump issues and what we did wrong and, you know, but Wool Bro is the way to go, 255, as you can see, is super quiet. Don't get an AEM, don't get anything else. Get this, but buy it directly from them because there's a lot of fake ones. Just go on Wool Bro, find Wool Bro Direct there in California, order it, to the, order it from them. And as you can see, it's running right now. Um, again, I'm gravity feed. I don't know what's been starving my tank. I keep, keep gas in the tank, so I always make sure that it's full. Um, that's one thing. So the tank is full um, because you don't want to splash and then have a starvation issue so 
Here's the catalytic converter right there, installed from Tectonics. There's my downpipe. My midpipe is a catalytic converter, down to the back, down to a Borla. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut this car off. <laughs> shut this car off and put that wheel on and go out for a ride and see how she performs. And uh, you know, hopefully be back, be back on the road because this thing's been been a lot for me but i'm glad i got no leaks i was like i tighten everything up and you know you always assume you're gonna get a leak right away but i didn't so thank god um, okay, so just going on look just a little quick shakedown the car's running great you can see it's quiet i'm on fifth gear you don't even hear the exhaust i mean you hear it but it's not obnoxious it doesn't blow back you know you know you don't get the burble tune, but it's, it's good, you know, with the um, catalytic converter. I don't smell any fumes, so catch cans fixed. Uh, exhaust sounds good. I don't get that back smell. And I don't smell the fumes from the fuel anymore because I fixed those vents. So definitely this Wilboro is nice, nice and quiet. It's a nice day today. So you can see I'm going to come up to my turn here. Let me get out of gear, hold on. Get out of gear, get into first, hold on guys. Actually, I'm gonna go into second. And these BC callovers, man, they, they feel great. So, uh, I gotta go into my shop so I can park, my, park this car because my main goal today was just to fix this and I did, so. Okay, here back here let me see you hear the exhaust and that's where we're at so and she's doing good doing real good there goes a little burp, burp, but it wasn't major that was me just letting go of the gas but definitely not obnoxious fun to drive probably not a big fan of the how big the steering wheel is so i like the originality but it's really nice to have a smaller steering wheel so i might end up getting one of those so um well that's it guys um i know it's been um a lot with this whole fuel situation but um i fixed that part i did go and get gas and i still was kind of clicking so i need to figure out what the deal with that is so i gotta check to make sure that the line from the top of the tank the other one that goes to the vent that for some reason i didn't properly check that just to make sure i got no kinks in that i don't think so but i gotta check it to make sure but i don't smell anything so let me give you guys a quick rub sounds really good so hopefully it holds like this and then i could work on the air conditioning and then once i get that done then hopefully i could work on upholstery and other little things with the car. But don't forget to subscribe, give me a thumbs up and keep watching and comment below. Um, definitely Wilbur is the way to go. That's the video of this one from the beginning to the end. And hope you like the video. Thanks again for watching. See you guys on the next one. Mention the video. I went ahead and rewrapped this. So I had to cut this much off, huge chunk, so it doesn't rub right here. And I could fit my cover on. I had to go ahead and just shave a little bit right here, but you can see then now with the cover on, the engine looks pretty stock, pretty original like it belongs in there. The car drives nice, as you can see. Um, hopefully, I don't have any more fuel issues. But outside of that, we're good. Things are looking great in here besides that bracket right there. But um, that's how the engine looks with the cover. Hope you guys like it. Um, here's the car. And more to come. Thanks again, guys. Take it easy.